routers allow us to create a navigation structure in our Backbone web app. With routers, we can create links to pretty much anything we want. We're not going to cover every single route concept, but in this video, to create events. The key in this case will be the actual route link, and it's best to think of it as an actual URL, an actual web page address that's accessible from a web browser. The value will be the custom method we want to invoke when someone navigates to the route link or URL. Now there's a really important point you need to understand about backbone routes. The common use of routes is to execute a method that's wrapped in the value when the value's respective route link gets loaded into a web browser. Thanks to recent browser technologies like the History API, routes and their methods are accessible from a web browser's back button. This may not sound like a big deal, but it's evidence of how far browser technology has come. Trust me, it's a big deal. So I'm now in router.js where I'm going to place my first block of code. And for that, I have to go to snippets.txt. And I'm going to highlight and copy the block of code from line 32 to 46. And go back to router.js and paste it in at the top and save it. So as I've done for previous backbone components, I'm namespacing my code on line two. And on line four, I'm creating a namespace variable called app.router and using it to create a brand new in chapter three when I use views to render model data that was in my collection. Let's recap this by first looking at flowerapp.js. When I created three model instances, I gave each one a link property. Take note that this property matches the route name. So the link name Model got rendered on index.html. This property was added to my web page content thanks to my template. So let's review that on index.html. On line 24, I append the link property in my anchor tag's href attribute, placing it after a hash or pound sign. I'm going to call it a hash. This hash is needed to create a routable link in Backbone, so always remember to include it. To confirm that the links were properly added to my web page, I'm going to open up this page in Google Chrome and review my page structure in the Elements tab. And we see that the links are all there. Let me expand this one a little bit more. Go into All Flowers, go into Section, expand this first article, and look at the links. Quickly create a set of route links on my web page. Okay, we've come to the final step, adding the routable custom methods to my router.js file. And for that, I have to go to snippets.txt as usual. And I'm going to highlight and copy all the code starting at line 54, all the way down to line 68. And I'm going to go back to routes.js and paste it inside my app.router object at the bottom that, clean up that white space at the bottom. Now I'm going to talk about that no copy method on line 13 in a moment. 
Let's talk about the other one. two flower routes work the same way. These three routes all use jQuery to find an empty div tag with an ID name of copy, which I added to my web page at the start of chapter two, and then use jQuery's.html method to load in some unique wording. And due to how .html works, if wording is already inside of the copy element when a route gets clicked, .html will remove the old copy first, then add the new copy. The no copy method on line 13 works a little differently. If we look at line 7, I attach this method to the home page route. I don't want any unique flower wording to appear when this route gets clicked or accessed, so I want to empty my copy div. I've passed it an empty set of quotes as a parameter of no copies.html method to make sure that this happens. Now my routes are configured but haven't been instantiated yet. I'm going to do that with one final piece of code. And for that, I have to go back to snippets.txt. Through 78. And this time, I'm going to flowerapp.js. backbone.history.start method. So my route should be done. Let me look at the page on Google Chrome to confirm that everything's working. I'll close out the elements panel. Take note that it's got a hash as part of its link. That's backbone routes in action. Now, when I click on the back button, we see that the methods are still being invoked. This is functionality that was really only possible with server-side software at one point. Backbone offers a nice alternative. Now, there's something to be aware of when using routes. They have hashes in their URLs, which is also the case with in-page anchor links, or jump links as they refer to sometimes, which move you to various locations on a web page. If you use routes on a web page with jump links, the jump links will probably stop working. A web search will bring up some of them will help you add a lot of power to your web app. To learn more about the power of routes, check out the official on a small rant about how good Backbone is.